So welcome to a brand new series on my channel where I'm gonna introduce five useful flutter flow tips that you just might find handy. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Hey, if you're not using action blocks with inside your application, now is the time to consider using them. They promote good reusability throughout your application. Let me give you an example. So here we go then, a very, very simple example. At the top of my screen there, I'm asking for a message. When I hit the submit, that's gonna call out to an application level action block. If I just hit submit, and you can see a snack bar that gets displayed across the bottom. Now that's not game changing, but what's really important here is that that action block is application wide, which means means that if I then make a style change or I'd like to change the typeface or set the uh, the text to bold or whatever I would like to do, I only have to do it in one place. I do not have to go through the whole of my application and make that particular change. And that's really important. The next little test I've got here is I've got another action block, which is just going to call out to an API. Okay. So if, for example, if you are calling out to an API on multiple occasions, whether it's at application level or at the page level, then you can call into an action block to make that call out to the API that will then return back a result set. So if I just hit the get users here, it's going to call out to a basic API and it's going to bring back some usernames. And of course, depending on what you're doing, you could then reuse that every single time throughout your application. So that's an application uh, action block. So action blocks can be located by going to any area that you've kind of got where you're actually focusing on your actions. If you just move over to the actions here, click on the action blocks option. You can see here I've got two action blocks here on the right hand side. This is the one that displays the snack bar message. And of course, I just opened that up and quite simply, it is just showing a snack bar. But the key thing about it, of course, is that it's passing in a parameter into the action block. If I just close that down here, you can see here I've got one parameter here. So if I just select that, you can see here that the, the, the top level display here is showing that the, the parameter of a message. All I'm doing, I'm just passing in a string into that. And of course, I'm then picking that up with inside the snack bar. I'm passing it in here as a, a value, an action parameter actually into the snack bar. So that's great. So I've got that in one place and it means I can come back here in the future. I can change all of these values and it will then be uh, applied right across the whole of my application. And similarly, I've got another action here, which is the one I just mentioned about the get user list again. Now this is a little bit more uh, on this. This is making a simple API call out. Um, it's giving the result back and it's actually returning back the JSON response back into my application. So of course, if I just close that and show you where I actually invoke that here on the get users, go to the actions, bring that up. You can see that I'm actually just calling the action block here. So you just literally add this in as another action uh, sort of uh, entry within here. And then of course you can then configure that up to call out to the action block. Um, here I've, I've actually set the name of the action block here so they'll all be listed and then of course the result comes back as the get user result and then I can then set the and, and update the application state um, with the values that come back. So that's action blocks. Have a look at the documentation with inside the Flutterflow docs are really really handy to use and um, yeah good luck with those. So for this one, then there is two options available to you when you are publishing your web application. Now this is specifically for web applications. So if you are building those, you can now choose a different renderer that will actually provide you with a more cleaner and slicker looking user interface. And of course, if you've been publishing your applications and you've been noticing that it's a little bit blurry in places or it doesn't look quite so sharp and crisp, well, you can now choose the Canvas Kit renderer with inside Flutterflow. Just one caution though, this is a beta a feature in Flutterflow at the time of recording. Um, so you just need to make sure you fully test that with your application. And the other point to make is that the download size to your distribution, your web distribution, will be a little bit bigger than if you were just using the default renderer. Let's have a quick look in Flutterflow to see where you turn that on. So in Flutterflow, then move over to the cog on the left-hand side. Make sure you've got web publishing selected. This just here. And on the right-hand side, you can see this option now called Use a Canvas Kit Beta. This little toggle. You can just turn that on. A little bit of information on the eye there. Have a little read of that. And of course, there's a link to the web page that we just had a very, very brief look at in the previous little segment. Um, but yeah, have a look at that. Um, give that a good whirl. Publish your application. And uh, hopefully, you should see that actually looks a little bit more cleaner and sharper. 
So for my next one, this is where components come into their own. Let me give you a scenario. Okay, so on the screen at the moment, I've got a simple list view here that's got some rows in here and it's just showing some country details. It's just going to show the country name, but behind it, I've got a population. Now, the scenario is, is I just want to hit this little button here and of course the country name will disappear within the row and it will show the population. Now, with inside my application state, I've got a simple list of countries here. You can see here and here, I've just got some simple names here with some some uh, numbers here to represent the uh, population and that's course of what's getting displayed with inside my user interface so as I as I what I would like to do is hit this button and find that it reveals the actual population but this is where the problem is okay so if I um, simply just hit this you can see that oh, okay all of my animations are playing out and if I go back to my UI and I go back to the actual button here the toggle button and actually have a look here I've got a simple widget animation action that just calls out to the the particular uh, text and then executes the actual animation. Now the problem is of course that what that doing is is it's playing all of the animations within inside my list view. That's not the way to do it. What you need to do is you need to create components that represents each of these actual panels and then of course once you're then at a component level you can then play around with the animations independently until your heart is content. So let me now show you what that looks like now that I've introduced a component to cover that particular scenario. So here we are then with a new and improved page. Now on the left hand side you can quite simply see that it's pretty well much the same but um, the, uh, the we've actually now got a component now that's which with it, which is actually inside the actual list view itself. Now remember the list view is only returning back all of those countries from my application state. The difference is, is my co component is accepting a number of parameters and you can see here that we've got a couple of um, different uh, parameters here. We've got the actual title of the country and the population really quite straightforward. They will be picked up with inside the actual component for display in the text fields. Now, if I actually look at that actual component itself, if I just select that, you can see here now, this is the great thing is we're, we're in kind of like an independent world now. Okay, we're outside of our parent page, which means that anything we actually reference, whether it's actions or anything like that, or animations are kind of uh, actually local to the actual component itself. So that's great. It means that every single instance of this component that actually lands with inside the parent page will be itself. So you can see here that I've just got some title passed and I've got the population. They're just mapped straight through to the parameters that are actually passed in. And you can see here we've got the little toggle button, of course. And, and just to point out actually as well that on, on the component here, we've got this bit of local component state here that's really just going to track whether somebody's actually showing the population or not. That's all that it's doing. And of course, with inside the actual toggle button itself if I actually bring up the actual actions here I'll spare you the detail here remember the sample is available the link is in the description please do go and have a look but really all this is doing is really just checking to see whether it's true or false that show population component state and then we're just playing out the animations that get shown on the UI now what does that look like let me show you what it looks like in the test mode so if we go just do a quick reload and it should all spring into life. Here they come. So there's all of our countries here from the application state. If I just select this and I just toggle over, you can see now that everything is working nicely and independently. Now, please do uh, not worry about that little juddering of the United Kingdom there. That won't actually happen in a, in a runtime version, but you can see here that um, that is playing out exactly how we need it. So just bear that one in mind then. Please do try to keep your components and again, promoting reusability through your, uh, your application application, please try to use it in this particular way because that's exactly how components are designed to be used with inside Flutterflow and it allows you then to hook onto things like your animations and kind of play out um, them independently away from any of the page level animations uh, and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. So this is just a really quick one regarding the use of spacing within inside your Flutterflow application. So when you're actually designing your UI, try to be consistent with the padding that you will pretty well much put across your application. So you, for example, here on the screen at the moment, you can see that I've introduced a 16 pixel spacing between all of my widgets. And you can see that here, if I just choose like the, the actual component here, you can see that I've got 16 on the left and 16 on the right with inside my actual list view itself. I've marked my spacing as 16. If I now hop across to the other sample here, you can see here that my, my message text here, and if you look on the actual column itself, you can see that I've introduced this 16 point system as well. Now that could be eight, it could be four, but try to be really consistent throughout your UI. That, that means that, that pretty well much, then most of the screens will then start to feel the same for your users. So just a quick one there on spacing. 
So custom data types with inside Flutterflow has been one of my favorite features of 2023 so far. They are so powerful and they are so useful depending on your use case. In this little sample, what I've got here is I've got some sticky notes here at the top and I wanna copy them and I wanna paste them to the bottom, but I don't actually copy the actual sticky note itself. I just want to copy the data within and then I'm gonna then paste them into a different look and feel on the bottom. So I can just go here, hit copy. Um, again, I've called out to me action block here which has uh, showed this global uh, sort of message and I can just paste them in here I can go here and I can just paste them in here so quite a very very simple thing to do now they're not being copied to a traditional clipboard they're actually being copied to a temporary app state variable which is going to look after the sticky note for us while we then decide what to do with it and in this case we store it temporarily because we've copied it and then of course we paste it when we need to use it let me show you what that looks like with inside of flood of flow. So the great thing about custom data types is that you can actually define a schema that is useful to your applications. You can see here on the left hand side, I've got this one called uh, Sticky Note, and it's just containing a title and a description, and it's of type uh, string. So this, remember, is not application state. This is just setting up the actual schema for our Sticky Note. And then we've got one here called Clipboard, okay, and that takes receipt of a sticky. So really just this one above. And you can see here that it's set up as the data type of a sticky note. So just keep this in mind. And then what we're then gonna do now is move over to application state, which allows us to hook onto those particular schema uh, schemas and actually then define the actual the actual fields of inside application state that's gonna look after those. So as you can see here, I've got this field name called stickies, and this is just a list of sticky notes that you've just seen. And you can see here, I've got some, the two sticky notes that you saw in the sample here. You can see I've got the title and the description, the same there, title and the description. So that's our stickies and I've just hard coded some data in there so it's not putting it from a database or anything like that but it could quite easily do that and then of course we down here we've got the clipboard which has got nothing in it whatsoever but it's of type clipboard okay so I've been very very specific about the data type and that's a great thing about custom data types is it allows you to shape everything up how you would like it so that's great so how does that work with inside the UI let's see how that's set up so please do go ahead and download this sample using the link in the description just so you can get yourself right in there and actually have a look. But I'll give you a quick brief explanation to how it works. So here you can see at the top here, we've got this component called a, a sticky component. And if you look down in the folder here, you can see we've got a sticky component if I just click on that. So it just looks like a sticky note. You can see here that um, we've got some parameters that get this, get, get set up a title and a description. I'm just passing those values in. And um, and then pretty well much that, that's it actually. Then with inside this, this option here this is the only uh, sort of uh, sort of button that's got anything behind it in this particular sample here but if I just hit the actions here and open that up you can see that what I'm doing is the first thing I'm doing is updating the application state what I'm doing is I'm taking the values um, from the title and the description and then what I'm doing is I'm then saving that within the actual clipboard itself okay so you can see here we've got this thing called update fields if I just actually just click on update fields here I'm setting the value and um, it's of it's of type sticky okay so just remember here that um, we're setting the sticky with inside the clipboard uh, application state variable here and you can see the value to set is the actual sticky so you can see here that um, I've set the title and the description and that's all that I'm doing is I'm just storing those values with inside that application state variable and then of course what I'm doing is I'm calling out to the action block as well that you see previous in the video here just to, sh to say that I've actually copied it to the clipboard um, just one note here right here I'm actually re rebuilding all of the pages here um, for the application state uh, to be then be applied on the actual page itself so we actually then get to see the uh, the copy option then get updated with inside the UI but just a small piece of detail just to point out so just um hit close there so at this particular point I've actually copied it we know that we're going over to the application state we know that we're storing it over here which is great and then of course with inside the UI itself then if I just go back here to the actual Actual screen so we're at this state now where it's copied and then down here of course what happened is this button will then get enabled because what this button is doing of course is it's looking out for uh, actual the actual clipboard the actual sticky note within the clipboard itself um, actually has a title that is set so once once we know that then that that button will then become active and you can see it's under disable here or, or enabled here that button will come enabled and then up up here 
I'll bring up the action flow here and you can see exactly what is happening. This is really just checking to make sure that the title is set. Um, I don't really need to put this condition in here because of course that's applied outside of this on the actual button. So we know that the user can't actually click this anyway, but I've just put it in here. The update app state widget, all this is really doing is it's taking that sticky note that is within inside the actual clipboard application state variable. It's lifting it out and it's adding it to a list of temporary sticky uh, sticky notes. Now, now that is a, a page state uh, sort of variable. That, okay, they're storing all of those sticky notes. So just bear that in mind. We'll have a quick look at that in a second. And then here I've got a little bit of update of the state where really all I'm doing is I'm just clearing out all of the values within inside the clipboard. So it's a one-time operation. Um, if I just close that down, if we actually just go over to the actual custom date to the type page, you can see here we've got this local state variable here called as temporary sticky notes. And really it's just a list of, and again, this is where the custom data type types come in it's just of type sticky note so um yeah that and then that is then obviously then bound to the actual list view up here you can see here we've got the, the the actual variable name and it's really just a temporary list of stickies and of course as i keep copying these and pasting them in then they'll appear in this particular list so hopefully from that you'll see where custom data types can actually be quite handy depending on the sort of application that you are building but you can really sort to of start shaping up the the style of your data and then you can then use it in a variety of different ways through outside your application but again please do download the sample have a quick look at this if this is something you're interested in having a look at and then you'll see kind of how it works so I can't let you go without a simple bonus tip here for this particular video snapshots inversions could be your time saver they could be your friend when it comes to uh, getting yourself back out of a tricky situation so up here you've got this little option here that has got that little clock with a little revert a, a sort of icon here now this is your project history and of course what you've got here you've got this option called snapshots and you can see here that these are the, the you can see here that I've been working on this sample here for this particular video over the last couple of days here and I've got a variety of different snapshots the great thing about snapshots is, is if I'm actually putting something together and I think, oh my gosh, I've made a complete and utter mess of that, I can revert back to a point in time. And what's even even better about this is the fact that you can actually revert back to a specific point in time. So as you are designing and developing your UI, um, Flutterflow behind the scenes will be making these uh, snapshots for us. And of course, the good thing is I can actually peek in, I can actually go and have a look and see what was it about that particular change at that particular time, and I can revert back to that point in time. It is a once operation, of course, once you revert, there's no going back. So just bear that one in mind. Uh, the other one to point out is also versions as well. Um, I use versions a little bit more sparingly, but of course, if, I, um, if I'm making a significant change to um, an application that I'm building, then what I'll do is I'll periodically will create a new version of the application. Just hit save here. You can just put some details in here, save the version, and then you'll get a version two, version three, etc. So um, yeah, hopefully that will help um, get you back out of a sticky situation. So that's snapshots and versions. Yeah.